when you're working in a very technical environment, there's bound to be problems that crop up from time to time. So what we're going to do in this video is step through a troubleshooting methodology that you can apply to practically any scenario to help you identify what the problem is, go through a process of testing how you might resolve that issue, and then finally what you can do to not just resolve the problem, but to try to make sure you know what to do when this problem occurs next time. Let's step through an overview of what this process looks like. The first step is to identify really what the problem is. Once we've identified the problem, we can come up with some ideas about what we think might be causing this issue, and then we can test those ideas to see if they really are the root cause of this problem. Once we decide that the issue that we've discovered can be resolved with this test that we've created, we can create a plan to finally resolve the issue and then implement that plan and roll it out so that this problem doesn't happen again. And once we've rolled it out, we need to make sure that whatever we have discovered, whatever we think we fixed, has really solved the issue. And then once we're sure that we've solved it, we can document exactly what we've done so later on we can go back and rediscover this if it ever happens again. The first step of identifying the problem becomes extremely critical, especially on very complex issues. We want to be able to gather as much information as possible. And if, if there is an error message or there is a specific type of output, this is the part of the troubleshooting process where that specific message becomes very, very critical. Whenever a problem occurs, it also might have multiple symptoms associated with it. If you have a bad switch, somebody might complain that they're not able to print. But somebody else might complain that they're not able to save a file to the file server. These are two very different symptoms, but obviously there's a single root cause associated with them. We need to find every possible symptom that people might be experiencing. And of course, question your users. They're the ones who are going to have the firsthand knowledge of really what's going on when this particular problem occurs. So they can be a very, very good source of detail. Don't just rely on a bunch of logs or error messages that might pop up. One thing that might also be very helpful is to determine if anything has changed. Were new drivers loaded? Is somebody working currently in the closet? Do we have people actively performing switch upgrades or changes to the network? We need to discover that as well so we can put that all into the identification of the problem. Now that we've collected this important information about what the problem is, we need to think about what might be causing this issue, and we need to come up with some theories about what that might be. Occam's Razor says that the simplest things are very often the ones that are most likely, so we should probably start with those very obvious things to start with. If we're having network problems and people are on a very old switch that sits in a closet that's been collecting dust for a while, that might be the cause of our problem. Now, of course, it could be related to sun spots. There could be a cosmic ray storm that might be happening. So in that particular case, we have two theories. But I would expect that probably the one that is most likely is going to be a bad switch. So we're going to need to start putting these in a type of order. But you do need to consider everything. It may not be a bad switch, and it may not be cosmic rays, but it may have something in between that as well. We need to think about every possible thing that might be, and we need to make a list of those things. Start with your very easy theories at the top that we can test very quickly. And then we might want to list every other thing that this could possibly be. So at the end of this, we know exactly what we can test to see if we can solve this particular issue. The testing process is the next one on our list. So now that we have a list of our theories, let's go through and confirm if any of the theories that we have might be the ones causing this particular issue. Now we're starting with the easy things. Maybe we're simply swapping out a network cable. Maybe we have an extra switch, and we can move everybody to a different switch and try that. But of course, not all theories are going to work. We may replace the switch, and they still have problems with the issues that they're occurring on the network. So we need to think about maybe a different set of theories for the problem that might be happening. And of course, don't forget that there are other people that might have been in this situation before, people that are doing this every day. This might be a good opportunity to call an expert and have somebody come in and look at your list of theories and perhaps add some of their knowledge to this list to perhaps extend out what testing you could do to further see if you could solve this issue. Once we've done our testing and found the particular problem that needs to be resolved, we need to then put that plan into action. 
And that is not something that can normally be done immediately. It may be something that has to wait until after hours. Maybe the problem that's occurring is very intermittent, and you've decided and realized that the problem is related to a fiber patch cord, and you need to replace the patch cord. But since this is an intermittent issue and everybody is running during the day just fine, maybe we can only do that in a normal change control window. So we may have to wait until after hours to actually perform this particular implementation and put the plan into attack. Sometimes it's not as simple as that, however. You may say that we need to change out the fiber connection, but we might also have to do some additional things. What after you change the fiber, you realize that now you have a different type of fiber. You may need different types of interfaces for your switch that you weren't planning on. So you need to have a plan A and a plan B and perhaps even a plan C so that you could at least get the problem solved in what often is a very short window to be able to do this during non-production hours. In large environments, you generally have a very small window to perform these changes, so the actual fix needs to be as efficient as possible. Usually, you're creating scripts that you can do a lot of things in a very short period of time. You might also want to have people on standby or even have experts in the room. So if this is a particularly complex issue, you can perform the changes that need to be performed, but you also have someone that you can contact on the phone, or you have somebody who's right there watching who can also assist with resolving this issue. Now that you've implemented your fix, you have to confirm that your implementation is one that really solved the problem. And this should be a test that's already built in to the entire process itself. Not all of your customers are going to be there at 2 in the morning when you perform some of these changes during that very small change control window. So your customers may be on the phone. They may be testing from home. Or they may have given you instructions on how you can be sure that your issue has now been resolved. You may also want to have preventive measures in place. If this is something associated with a hardware problem, maybe you've decided, I'm going to have an extra piece of hardware in this rack, and I'm going to have it available. Or if the issue was related to a bad piece of hardware, maybe you create a redundant networking environment and implement something so that if this happens again, it's not going to cause the same amount of downtime. If you've ever run into a very complex issue on your network and your operating system, and you've tried to find out how to resolve this particular issue or understand what this particular error message means, what do you do? Well, you go right to your Google. You go right to a search engine, and you list out anybody else who may have already documented this problem. Documenting these issues becomes incredibly important because now you have this knowledge that you've built over time. And if these are issues that are very specific to your environment, it becomes even more important that you document them. You're going to have valuable knowledge that someone else may be able to use later. You might even also want to consider having a formal database. Perhaps this, this is a help desk that you could put notes into that later on you can search through those notes to see what's going on so that later on you can have this massive database that you've collected over time that's going to provide you with a wealth of information. When you're collecting information like that, especially over long periods of time, you can do very interesting things. There's a very interesting study that was done by Google Research where they have all of these hard drives, and they were able to look over a long period of time, over years and years and years, at the drive failure rates, and they were able to predict when during the lifetime of a disk you might have a failure. Very interesting study. And here's the URL here on this slide if you'd ever like to go back and look at that and understand why it's so important to document that data. This troubleshooting process can be applied to so many different problems that you might run into. And by simply following this flowchart from the very beginning of identifying the problem all the way to the very end, you're going to speed up the amount of time that it takes to solve some of these complex issues.